Welcome back treasure hunters. So I wanted to show you the haul that I got on one trip at Goodwill. I went early on a Sunday morning, like right after they opened, uh, because I made a purchase a couple days before it was a table and I needed my wife's SUV to pick it up. But I swung through just to see if they had anything. And I was really surprised because usually I think that they usually put things out mid morning or afternoon, they'll put some new stuff out. And with it being Saturday, a lot of the good things would probably be picked over. That wasn't the case. I was very surprised. I got a whole bunch of cool stuff and some really nice art pieces. And I think I spent a total of 60 bucks. So I'm gonna go over all that cool stuff with you. Before I do that, hit that subscribe button for me. Also, don't forget about that giveaway I'm doing this month for that vintage Steuben glass bowl that I won at auction maybe a month or so ago. So if you want to know how to enter, I'll tell you at the end of the video. Now it's time to get into some of the treasures that I found on my Sunday Goodwill trip. I actually found so many things that I had to stop and go get a cart. And usually I don't, especially on a Sunday, I would rarely ever get a cart unless I needed it just because it's way too hard to navigate, especially they have one direction aisles now with arrows that you're supposed to go one way. And it's just a nightmare trying to navigate through and look for things when you know you have a cart sitting there so i found enough stuff that i had to carry it all over stick it in the cart so i could keep looking that's not a bad thing so let's get into the first thing i found here so i found this pair here these are by the same company my recent sales video that i made i sold that jfk sculpture replica uh, it was made from Alva Stone from Alva Studios in New York. And these are the made by the same company. They're just two lion, uh, probably bookends, I would say. And they're both in pretty good condition. This one has a tiny chip here at the top, but given that these are supposed to be replicas of older statues, I don't really see a huge problem with that, but there are, Dated on the back, 1965. And this one is the one that has the Alpestone sticker here on the bottom. So I picked these up. Each one was $439, which is a real good price for each. I'll sell these as a pair. And I'm not exactly sure how much I'm gonna charge because I haven't even looked them up, but I sold the JFK on the marble base for a hundred bucks. So I would probably, you know, list these maybe around 60 to $80. And also since they're dated 1965, they are a bit older, most likely a little more rare than uh, some of their newer things. So the next piece I found, I just picked this up because it was 329 and it's kind of abstract, but I really liked the glaze on it. And this is just a piece of studio pottery and it is signed on the bottom, but I haven't been able to figure out whose signature it is. I have a feeling this is probably a student piece, but you never know. I have seen different artists use this kind of freeform natural look. And, you know, then they use this really nice glaze over it. And I just have to figure out if the person that made this is actually a well-known potter if it's just a student piece, but I didn't want to leave it behind for 329. It was worth a shot to me. And if it is just a student piece, I'm sure I could still sell it, just not for very much money. And I'll continue on with the studio pottery. And this jumped out at me just because of the overall style uh it's and also it had this little metal ring here part of it which is a little different i don't see that too much but it does have a chop mark here and that's just a little stamp that studio potters can use instead of actually 
signing the bottom or inscribing the bottom uh, with their name. It's just like a little stamp and usually you'll find those around the bottom rim here. But as soon as I saw that and it kind of, to me, it looks a, uh, like a Japanese style just with the glaze used and just how the bottom is also. So this was also only 329 and obviously a student's not going to have a chop mark. So I know this was made by someone who does a lot of studio pottery. It's just figuring out whose mark this is. And that can be pretty difficult, but this one looks like the mark is JT within a circle. So I just have to do a little research on that, but for 329, it's a cool piece and I could probably at least sell it on Etsy for like 20 bucks if I can't figure it out. So the next thing I found here is this ceramic Japanese, like old man statue here. This, uh, I wasn't really sure until I picked it up. It's actually really heavy and you can see the bottoms even filled in. A lot of times with the newer stuff or the less valuable stuff, it'll just be all hollow. But this actually had, you know, the entire bottom filled in and it also has a mark here in red on the bottom. No who the artist is obviously. And I did post this to a Japanese art and ceramics group on Facebook. I haven't heard anything yet, but hopefully somebody can let me know at least what this says. I did see some comparable ones on eBay and they were ranging. The couple that I saw were selling for 180 and then uh, 220, I think, or 225 it's really well made. It's hand painted. Uh, the only thing that was wrong with it were there's two little chips of the blue, just the paint part gone, but it's pretty cool, kind of unique. And I know a lot of people, I have sold a lot of Japanese pottery or ceramics. So I think I got this for $4.99 and it was definitely kind of a unique cool piece to pick up. Uh, I don't really know what I'm going to sell it for yet, but just looking at the couple examples that I found, you know, I should at least I would think be able to get at the minimum 60 to 75 bucks unless those were way off and then I don't know, but it's worth the uh, 4.99 to me to pick that up. So to go along with the statues and pottery and ceramics that I found, I also found five pieces of artwork, which is a pretty high number for one trip to find, you know, five pieces that you think you can make a really nice profit on. This one I actually found right when I was checking out, I was in line and somebody rolled up, one of the employees rolled up one of those carts with the stuff they were going to put out on the shelves. And it, they parked it right next to the line. And I looked in the bottom and I saw this and it kind of, I don't know, sparked my attention. So I went over and checked it out quick and just grabbed it because it was $5.99 and I didn't even bother looking up. But the reason why I grabbed it right away is because it does have the Gallery One sticker here. And I did look real quick in here and there's a certificate of authenticity. So that tells me that this probably has some sort of value, especially when you're only paying $5.99 for it. So this is actually done by Pat Buckley Moss, and she did a whole bunch of these kind of folk art, different scenes and people. This one's titled Joshua of a little boy here sitting on a barrel with a fish. And this is a limited edition. It's 438 of a thousand. She signed it and then it's dated 1983. When I got home, actually when I got in my car, I looked up and her work varies a lot and there are more rare pieces from her and I didn't find any of this exact print, but definitely worth a 599 investment. 
I'm not sure what I'm going to price this for yet, but it was really cool to find this as I was leaving. So the next piece I found here is a still life, obviously, of bowl of fruit. And this is done on a board and it is signed. And I think the signature says Fagan, F-A-G-A-N, but I'm not entirely sure. There were numerous pieces and this one obviously is pretty old. And I did find one of the other ones that I'm going to show you in a minute is dated 1950. And then I saw a couple other pieces of art that I couldn't identify uh, the signatures were easy to read and I couldn't find any other work. So I just left them, but I picked this one up because, you know, I did a search of Fagan and of course there was a whole bunch of different artists. So I didn't get a chance to actually verify like who exactly painted this, but it is, there's nothing on the back. It just obviously looks very old, but it's well done. Uh, there are a couple places where the paint might have been rubbed off. This was also uh, had a $5.99 price tag. So I figured I'd take a shot and see if I could figure out exactly who painted this. But any kind of you know mid-century older art like that, even if you can't figure out exactly who painted it, you could still sell it for a profit. Just not as much as obviously if you found something painted by a well-known artist. So. Frame's not in the best condition, but it's not terrible. There's just some discoloration, like scraping here around the edges, which a lot of people aren't really sticklers on, you know, the frame condition unless it's completely destroyed or something. But, um, you know, if this was done by a well-known artist or something, you they might just want to reframe it anyway if, to fit the look of you know where they're going to put it in their house so i like this one so this next piece is also an original painting and this one's actually signed down here and it's by vivian cantrell and dated 1950. i did find her work on numerous auction sites and one of her paintings actually sold at auction i think it was estimated at four to 600 and I think it sold for 450. And this one was also with, or uh, had a 599 price tag. And it's a cool scene of, you know, old Southwest with, uh, you know, just those old style Southwest buildings, I guess. Could even be Mexico. I don't, I don't really know. It's a nice painting. It's done really well. The frames in, Good condition, looks original, it's older. And here on the back, there's just some measurements that looks like uh, 12 by 16 and whatever else. But a nice original piece. I should definitely, you know, be able to, I think at least, you know, just given the one auction, since if it was just listed, for 425 then i would definitely need to do some more research but seeing that one of the paintings sold i didn't check how big it was though but seeing that it sold for 425 i should at least be able to i would think get 100 bucks for this but hopefully more so we'll see so this is the next piece that i found and this is a fairly large watercolor painting, obviously of some foggy mountains and forest. And this was done, it's signed here. Hopefully I can get this, but it's signed E. Brucker, which is Edmund Brucker. And when I saw that, I just did a quick Google search of painting signed Brucker and came up with a whole list of different paintings. His estimated value on all these different auction sites varied quite a bit, but I did find a another landscape painting about the same size and the estimated value was like three to 500 bucks. 
So that just told me, obviously, uh, this would be a good purchase. I don't know if I'd be able to make that much, but it is a really nice watercolor. And I really love how the mountains are done in the back. This was priced for $10.99. And there's no information on the back or whatever, but as soon as I saw it, I knew it was an original because you can still see, especially around the sun, you can still see pencil marks and it's also signed in pencil. So just a little bit of a closer look and you can definitely tell that it's an original. The frame's still in really good condition, I guess, for the age. Uh, he lived from, if I can remember correctly, like 1912 to maybe the 80s. So I was pretty happy with this find. And I think this was actually the first piece of art that I found. And then I found all the rest of those in a different spot in the store where they keep the smaller framed items. So I'll probably end up doing a little more research. I could see myself probably pricing this for, to start maybe around 350 on the lower side and see if I get any interest. And if not, I can keep knocking it down 25 bucks or so until it sells. And this was the my last find of the day. On the back, there's a little piece of paper that this is from the John Richard collection, which I have a couple other John Richard pieces and they sell even more recent stuff sells at like Nordstrom or on house, I see a lot and depending on what it is, but I mean, they're pretty expensive. This is, I don't really know. I think this is a print, but it was originally done. It says B Chan and there's a couple stamps markings there. There's a couple more stamps there. And then there's a couple more here at the top. But I thought it was a pretty cool piece. It's really big. That's why I have to tape it over here because it wouldn't fit where I was before. But this was also $10.99. So I know I can make a decent profit off this. I just don't know exactly what I'm going to price it for yet. But I couldn't just leave this one there, especially after all the rest of the cool art I found. So. That's all the stuff I found in one Goodwill trip. It was a really good day for treasure hunting. I found a lot of stuff that I think I can make nice profit off of. Also, I know that I told you I'd tell you how to get into that free Steuben glass bowl giveaway that I'm doing this month. And all you have to do is go to my Facebook page and you'll see my recent sales video and it's marked on there. All you have to do is like and share that video and you'll automatically be entered. And I will randomly select one of those people and ship that bowl out to you free of charge. So go ahead and do that now. Subscribe here on my channel. That way you can see all the videos that come out for the winners and all the other stuff that I'm putting out. I have a whole bunch of other thrift store finds that are stacking up that I want to share too. So. I'll be making a couple more videos of those. Thanks again. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll be back shortly. And as always, good luck out there treasure hunting.